So we have a situation with a chair and the quantity of legs. We're gonna pretend that looks like a good chair. And the variables X represent the number of chairs that you have and Y is supposed to represent the number of legs on all the chairs. So we're given four different expressions, or equations, I'm sorry, they have equal signs, so those are equations. And we have to decide which one of these is correctly modeling the situation or we could use to be able to calculate either the number of legs that we have or the number of chairs. So one of the things to kind of help you get a baseline of, ooh, what would let me find this out correctly? All right, so I know for every one chair I have, so we'll go chair and leg, if I have one chair, it has four legs. If I have two chairs, it has, I then have another set of four legs. If I have three chairs, I have another set of four legs. So this can kind of help me get a baseline of, if I plug in these numbers, am I getting the right values for it? So can I find the number of chairs I have by taking the number of legs I counted up all together and multiplying it by four? So if I go, say I have here, I pick one of the, the chair leg options. Four. If I plug in a four here, can I go four times four, and that's going to tell me how many chairs I have? Well, four times four is 16. According to my counting here, one chair means I only have four legs. So this would not work. But if I have this here, if I take the number of chairs that I have, and I multiply it by four, and I get four, and I get whatever that is, does that work? Well, if I have one chair, I plug in one for x. If I go one times four, one times four is four. Is that how many legs I should have? Sure. If I have two chairs, so I plug in two for x, four times two is eight. Would I have eight legs? Well, according to this, yeah, if I have two chairs in existence and they each have four legs, it means I have a total of eight legs. So b is a correct equation to let me find one of my unknown values. Here, if I have I can, can I figure out the number of chairs I have by taking the number of legs and dividing it by four? Okay, so let's again, let's plug in some values for the legs. Uh, I counted up, if I had 12 legs, so I, I plugged in a 12 and I divided it by four. What does that equal? It equals three. So would I have three chairs? Yes. So this is letting me correctly model the quantity of chairs to legs. And then if I plug this in, if I took the number of chairs and divided it by four, would that let me know how many legs I have? Well, if I say I have one chair, so I have one out of four. That's what Y is supposed to equal. So if I have one chair, I have only one quarter of a leg. No, I've got four legs, so that does not correctly model it, and we would cross that out. So the correct answers are B and C. Next, you're given a scenario with uh, pencil erasers and pens, and you're given some equations and various variables representing different values. They're either going to be cost or quantity, and we want to understand what these equations mean in the real world, in the context of this story problem. So P is representing the number of pens. So I can look at this and say the number of pens is equal to twice the E, and E is number of erasers. So if I have the number of erasers twice, that equals the pen, I can just say there are, he bought twice as many pens as he did erasers. twice as many pens were bought as erasers, okay? Or double the quantity of eraser, er, erasers was the number of pens that was purchased, or something along those lines indicating that the quantity is twice the eraser quantity, or the quantity of pens is twice the quantity of erasers. That also works, okay? Here, we are given equations representing cost. So X represents the cost of a pen, 
Y represents the cost of an eraser. And I'm seeing the cost of an eraser, if I multiply that by two, it gives me the cost of a pen. So I can say a pen is twice as expensive as an eraser because I would take two erasers to equal one of those. So a pen is twice the cost of an eraser. And this is an important skill because you're going to be asked to not just look at an equation, but understand what it means in the context of the story. So we want to look beyond it just being a number or a variable and figure out what is it expressing.